Beth Brandon from the Ecological Options Network, and we're based in California. And I, my partner and I are here because we're very, very concerned about this. And I want to assure you there are other Californians who do not want to send their radioactive waste here. We, we don't want to do that for a great many reasons, but the first one is it, it's environmental racism. And we really object to the concept of putting any more of the burden of the nation's radioactivity on your communities. Also, I want to talk about the transportation risks, which I know everybody has spoken about, but I can't resist. Um, every one of these canisters that would be coming would contain uh, roughly as much cesium alone, that's just one isotope, as was contained, uh, as was released in the Chernobyl accident. Every canister. Um, and so, just keeping that in mind, I was looking at just three years of, uh, from 2013 to 2016 of oil train accidents, which might give us an idea about how heavy loads fare on our nation's railways. In 2013, there were 11,636 accidents, 8,740 injuries, and 700 fatalities, but no Chernobyl releases. In 2014, 12,226 accidents, 8,788 injuries, and 765 fatalities. In 2015, 11,814 accidents, 9,087 injuries, 749 fatalities. 2016, and I'm sure you're going to be happy with that. I only looked at this many years. Um, 10,927 accidents, 8,050 injuries, and 805 fatalities. This is not a good idea to move this waste twice. We've got to put all those resources instead into finding a suitable repository, beefing up the canisters and putting them into thicker containers so we buy ourselves more time at each location where the radioactive waste is already, and seriously develop the hardened on-site storage that has been spoken about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is Philip Valdez, here's Philip. Good evening. Uh, I'm a stakeholder. I'm from Carlsbad, not Carlsbad, New Mexico, Carlsbad, California, which is about 15 miles as the crow flies or the plutonium flies from San Onofre. So it's very important to me that we do something about this waste. However, Rocky Flats still has a dead zone where people can't live. They've made it into a nature preserve. It's doesn't preserve anything. Um, Chernobyl has a dead zone. Fukushima has a dead zone. Hanford has a dead zone and no money to build it. I did a mathematical calculation of the thickness of the dry casks. They're not much thicker than an eggshell, proportionately. If you imagine an eggshell filled with lead, well, uranium is 1.7 times heavier than lead. So this, these are not safe canisters. The drop tests, all those other tests, they're not nearly as strict as the tests that they give them in, uh, in Europe. The, the, the tests are really designed so that the dry casts that they, can, that they want to build will, will pass the tests. They're not real, they don't have anything to do with the real world and what could really happen. 
Um, the the uh, uh, what we're talking about is the probability versus possibility. So by considering only the first 500 casts, that's 1 20th of the probability of an accident. How bad that accident is going to be? It, well, it's 20 times more likely that it's that it's going to happen if you've taken the whole 10,000. If you take all of those, and another thing is, if you build this thing. The nuclear industry is going to say, well, we have a solution to the nuclear waste problem. But what kind of a solution is it? It's, a, it's supposed to last 40 years. That's one number that I hear. 120 years is another number. 300 years is a number we've been tossed at, at as well. But the truth is, it may be there forever because those casks corrode. And trying to move them after 40 years may be an extremely risky thing if you can do it at all. Now, we spent the day at the uh, Carlsbad Caverns. And uh, you got a lot of wind here. Oh, it was windy. And uh, you got a lot of water seeping through your ground constantly. So if there's a problem, it's going to affect everything. Uh, it's going to affect your tourism. It's going to affect your livestock. It's going to affect your environment in so many different ways. And uh, let's talk about terrorism. They are not prepared to, to they're, they're not going to protect against a, a airplane strike even an accidental airplane strike, the turbine, the center of the turbine of an airplane is a very solid rod, and that will go through just about anything. And the fuel test, the fire that would occur if an airplane actually crashed into this enormous place would, would burst these casks. So they're not protected against the, any kind of terrorism. And that, not, not to mention, I mean, we had a, 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 a a drug guy, they, they dug a 500-foot tunnel in, in, in uh, Mexico to get him out. This is one person. If somebody wants to get into this thing, a fence isn't going to stop anybody. They, they can go under it. They do that all the time in California. Uh, <laughs> also, the bill that, it, that it is being proposed, it, they, they, need, they need a new bill because legally they can't build this thing yet. And uh, part of the bill, it, it's being rewritten just in the last day or so, such that nobody can sue if the DOE doesn't put enough money in to, to solve the problems that might come up. So, I, I mean, from top to bottom, it's, it's a farce. 20 years ago, we were told at San Onofre that the casks they were going to use were going to be two inches thick and a quarter of an inch of lead. And they're actually five-eighths of an inch thick. And that's thicker than they used to be, the ones that we were going to get when they were telling us they would be two inches thick were only a half inch thick. So don't expect anyone to be telling you the truth about what is possible or what's going to happen. And I strongly advise, even though I'd love to get rid of the waste, I'd love to find a sucker that'll take it. But don't be that sucker. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to go to uh, Robert Defer and Robert Robert Baldridge. Sharon. Thanks, Chip, and thanks to the to everybody for staying this long and listening. Um, and thank you to Carlsbad for welcoming us here. Um, as my husband said, we're from Carlsbad, California, and we. We recognize the, the sentiment that says we can take this problem, but this is everybody's problem. And it cannot be moved to any one place. So I want to ask the NRC, if you are going to consider this, if you are going to do an environmental impact, then do an environmental impact of what is really going to happen this is going to become a de facto permanent repository. We are still going to have waste at every nuclear power plant in the country that's open. Um, we're very happy that San Onofre is closed. It is a really bad place for the waste, but that doesn't mean that we solve the problem by moving it to a different place. We have to look at the transportation. We're talking about moving the most dangerous stuff on the planet all over the country. And 
if we moved it all today, we'd have more tomorrow. So if we're going to do an environmental impact, let's do an environmental impact of what's really going to happen. So the real question here is, when are we going to shut down all these plants and stop making more waste? That's really the problem. <laughs> the other thing that I think is very important to consider is nobody has ever opened a cask. Um, there's been a lot of discussion at San Onofre about the casks and a lot of questions about that. And we had some folks come in from the nuclear industry um, group and say, well, we're starting some studies about what might happen if we ever had to open a cask. But nobody's ever opened a real cask. So nobody knows what would happen. This is a beautiful place, as so many of you said, as we saw. And it might be contaminated forever. It, this is not something that you want to take on for the rest of the country. Yes, you can help the rest of the country. You can say, stop making this. And then let's figure out together the best thing to do with what's left. Thank you. Nowhere, baby, that tree.